So there has been an enormous amount of conversation about the bond market, in particular bond yields. And in this video, I want to talk about what bond yields are, what rising bond yields, what kind of effect they have on consumers, on markets in general, and how the Fed is possibly viewing the rising bond yield market. So first off, what is a bond yield? A bond is where a company or a corporation or a municipality will need some money. Instead of going to the bank and borrowing that money, uh, they go out to the market and they issue a bond. And in return, people buy that bond for, say, a par, which is typically $1,000. Now, they issue that bond, and based on their credit rating, they um, have different uh, costs to borrowing that money from you, the consumer. So if you're a uh, conservative blue chip company with good financials, you're gonna pay less in a yield to that uh, consumer uh, because you have good fundamentals, good credit quality. And so you may get a, uh, you know, a 3% yield on that, and that's 3% uh, paid to you as the uh, person who purchased the bond because that's your payment for lending that company or municipality or government money. Now, if you are a high risk uh, company, you're referred to as high yield bonds or junk bonds as they sometimes refer to them, and they will have a higher yield uh, because they're gonna pay you more in higher yield because you're taking more risk of default because if that company's fundamentals aren't really that strong, uh, they will uh, default and you won't get your $1,000 back for the bond you purchase. So you're going to get compensated uh, with a higher yield. So yields are sometimes used to benchmark loans. So for instance, uh, credit card loans or um, personal loans or mortgage loans. And when yields are high, there's the yield. So let's say your bank, you go to the bank and you want to uh, borrow some money and they say your uh, benchmark yield will be benchmarked against the 10 year treasury, let's say, or the five year treasury. And what they'll do is they'll uh, benchmark the interest that you're going to pay on that yield. And so let's say use the 10 year treasury right now is, uh, has a yield of about 1.64%. So you would have that benchmark yield plus the spread that uh, the bank makes on that loan. So let's say uh, they make a two point, uh, let's say they make a percent on the spread plus the loan uh, or plus the treasury yield of 1.6, you got 2.6% loan. Now, when the yield goes up, if it's a floating loan, meaning the uh, interest adjusts every period, certain period of time, let's say adjusts every once a year or once a month or mark to market once a month, that kind of thing. When yields rise, that cost of that loan goes up. So that's how when you look at yields and they're talking about the effect on the consumer, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about rising yields, which means the cost of that loan is going to go up. And if you have credit cards, uh, it's a similar thing. Those interest rates go up. Now, most credit cards companies just rip you off right off the top and they charge the most yield they or most interest they can, which I think is upwards of 24 to 25%. And you're just getting taken to the woodshed on that. And what they do is they go out and they borrow money at a real low interest rate, like where interest rates are now, and they make that spread between what you pay in interest and what they pay in interest. And that's how they make money. So why is this so important? Well, the Federal Reserve has driven federal funds rate. This is what the Fed loans money to banks at their rate to roughly zero. Uh, I think it's a quarter percent or below just depending on the day. Well, if you could borrow money at zero percent, how much would you bar borrow? You'd borrow a ton. And if you were a corporation who wanted to capitalize on cheap money, you would borrow a ton, maybe upwards of say $10.5 trillion in borrowing money. Yeah, corporations are at all time highs when it comes to how much they're borrowing 
and it's upwards of 10.5 to 11 trillion dollars, the highest in history. Okay, take that, you know what that is now. Now, couple that with a rise in the 10 year treasury or the five year treasury or the 30 year treasury, okay? That yield goes up and remember, the lender lends people money on based on the benchmark, let's say the 10 year treasury, plus a spread. Well, if you borrowed money 12 months ago, or let's actually go back six months ago, you probably borrowed it at a benchmark rate on the 10 year treasury below 1%. Cheap money, plus you put the spread that the bank makes and you borrowed it at a low rate. Now, if you have a corporation and you have a mark to market loan that adjusts every quarter or every month, you are paying more for that loan today than you were six months ago, okay? You see where this is going? This is where rising bond yields can really squash the consumer when it comes to purchasing. Well, how does the United States work? The United States is a consumption-based nation. We grow, we make uh, our country grows based on us as consumers consuming, okay? We go out, we spend money on goods and services, and that money is, uh, you know, helps the economy grow, and our GDP, gross domestic product, grows because of it. Well, if money costs too much, and you're not making more money in conjunction with your rising cost of that money, you quit spending. And that's where the predicament that our government, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury, are in at this point saying, wait a second, our job is to get the economy to grow. They shoot for like a, a, you know, a two to three percent growth rate on an annual basis. And now we're in a predicament where the money that you borrow is now costing more than it did, say, six to nine months ago when it was super dirt cheap. Look at housing uh, uh, development or housing purchases or app mortgage applications. They've all simmered down. They've all come down in the last three months because the cost of a mortgage is more because the rise in the 10-year treasury than it was nine, six months to nine months ago. And what that and what's the biggest purchase you'll probably make in your entire life, other than your kids, is a home along with, second to that, is a car loan, okay? And when your car loan is benchmarked against a rising uh, yield or rising benchmark like the 10-year or the five-year or the 30-year treasury, you, uh, that payment becomes more expensive to you. You buy then less of a car. You maybe don't buy a car. And all of a sudden, that growth rate we've had since, what, August or so, we've seen that growth starting to happen. We've entered a growth, rising growth, rising in inflation environment, and that growth rate happens. And when yield and money gets too costly, we start to see it come over the top of the bell curve. And we see it maybe flatten out at best. And at worst, it starts to go down. We see growth deplete. That's the predicament we are in with bond yields rising. So there's a lot of talk in the news about yield curve. What is yield curve, you may ask? Well, this is where you've probably heard of quantitative easing. We had a ton of it back in during the housing mar market crash where the government came out and they uh, injected money into the system. And how they do that is you, the bank, or a, a lending institution come to the Federal Reserve window with your treasuries, and they buy uh, those treasuries. They say, we're going to buy $10 billion or uh, uh, upwards of, I think at the time it was $800 billion was the biggest quantitative easing uh, amount. And what they did was they, you went to the window, they spent a uh, uh, Eight bill, eight hundred billion dollars in purchasing treasuries in exchange. They, the Federal Reserve, gave the the banks or the lending institutions. They gave them U.S. dollars, and then they lent it out to the uh, consumer, and the consumer went out and spent money, and the economy recovered. That's quantitative easing. One thing about quantitative easing is they have a set amount 
they will spend. So I used 800 billion. That was the set amount they will spend at any price of that treasury. So if the yield on the treasury was 3%, they'd buy it up to their whole alloc their total allocation of 800 billion. And if the yield was 2%, they buy it. Okay. Yield curve uh, control is where the Fed says we are going to buy this duration and we're going to buy it whenever it gets to this price, we'll buy it unlimitedly. So meaning, let's say the yield on the 10-year treasury gets to say 1.91%, the yield at that point, that translates over to the consumer, to the corporate uh, corporation that borrowed money uh, at a floating uh, rate based on the 10-year treasury. All of a sudden, that money has become so expensive that it becomes almost un unaffordable the corporate profits shrink, which is bad when it comes to reporting earnings. All of a sudden, your profits start to shrink. Consumers aren't buying as much because money costs more mo money. Costs more money. And so now all of a sudden you hit the top of that bell curve, that growth curve, and you start to head down. So the Fed says, could say, if the 10-year treasury got to 1.91%, we will buy all treasuries at that point unlimitedly. Not a set budget like quantitative easing is, but unlimitedly. So if it hits 1.91%, they're buying. So they could buy trillions of dollars of treasuries. And they're doing this is because they're driving the yield on that bond and your treasury down. And they want to get it down low because they want to make money cheap again so you can borrow more money and go out and spend it and get the economy recovering. The, the, the trick of this is, is that will they do it? Number one, there's a lot of speculation if they will or won't. But two, if they don't do it, where could the economy go in the coming months if we saw the 10-year treasury hit that, say, 1.91% yield rate? Now, remember, bond yields go up, bond values go down, like a teeter-totter, you and your buddy on the on the uh, swing set or on the playground on a teeter-totter and when yields go up what you know bond prices go down and then vice versa so if the fed could drive yields back down towards one percent that means money's cheap for you that means a mortgage new mortgage on a home or a refi on a home or buying a car becomes more affordable to you which means you'll go out and spend more money you don't really care about the amount you just care about the payment unfortunately that's how we've been brainwashed into thinking this about this and that's why they want to keep yields way way down this supports my big trade idea that i did in a video just recently about the big trade being buying into the 10-year and 30-year treasury environment because if you think about it this is say the two-year treasury and this is out here the 30-year treasury well right now the two-year treasury is going down in value because people are flooding out of long-term treasuries into short-term treasuries and that yield is pushing further and further down and possibly at some point will go to zero if not negative not yield which is a whole nother video and that 30-year treasury keeps going up and up and up if i remember right i think the 30-year treasury is at two point four or 2.6 range percent which if you bought that treasury you're making more money on that 10-year treasury or 30-year treasury than you are in a savings account but that value of your money keeps going down because that yield goes up so what the fed would come in and do with yield curve control is they'd buy the long end of the treasury and they would start buying it and let's say anything over let's just say um, 1.5% hypothetically, they say anything over that we will buy and they just go out and buy it. Well, they drive that treasury, 10 year treasury back down towards 1.5, which means the value of that bond goes back up and it starts to flatten out the curve a little bit, okay? So if they can flatten the curve out and get the 10 year treasury way back down, say close to 1%, 
That means money is cheap for you to borrow. You'll go out and borrow that money. You'll go out and spend it in the economy, which means the economy continues to grow and recover. What a great idea, right? Well, it's really not a great idea. Now, the Fed has the ability to expand its balance sheet. They have been doing that in over the last year from they've expanded it up to, I believe last I checked was between seven and eight trillion dollars, way above where it used to be. Um, actually, they expanded a bit by seven to eight trillion dollars. So an enormous amount of money they've been purchasing bonds in exchange for uh, US dollars, getting the economy to come back and people spending again. But this all comes down to a question of will they do it? Now, Australia has done this. They bought uh, the three year, up to the three year, tre uh, their version of the three year treasury, um, driving the yields down on that uh, treasury and below, or durations below three years. It initially drove their longer term treasuries up higher but they have settled down here recently. And what they're trying to do is, once again, keep money cheap so that the consumer will go out and spend and drive the economy, their economy higher and get the growth uh, rate going in the right direction, which is north instead of south. The question is, will the Fed, Federal Reserve of the United States do the same thing? Will they implement yield control? Possibly. If yields get too high, that means that 10.5 to 11 trillion dollars in corporate debt out there could become uh, a high risk for default because if you as a corporation can't make your payments just like your household you can't make your household payments because the you don't have enough income coming into the household versus the outflow or the debt payments well eventually you just throw your hands in the air and default it's the same way in the corporate world if their growth doesn't continue in relation to the cost of their debt eventually they've got to reorganize which means they uh, uh, refinance that debt at a lower rate if they can or they just file bankruptcy which is very possible. So the trick here is we're, 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 we're skating on thin ice in a sense. We are in a balancing act and you know uh, the Fed Reserve and the Treasury, they're flooding the market with treasuries right now, which means there's a high level of supply but because they're trying to raise money to keep up with the cost of the country. Um, but at some point, this, this has to work its way out. And at some point, if it's not in the next 12 months or the next 36 months, it may be seven years from now, at some point this all has to reset. Now, bonds, treasuries, uh, they do uh, at some point, uh, point mature, which means all the old treasuries that mature roll off and they go away. But the problem is we have issued more treasuries in the last year uh, and so that maturity level is still an issue. Um, I didn't know, I learned this just recently, 20 to 30% of all US dollars in circulation right now have been issued in the last 12 months, which means they have been buying up treasuries in the marketplace, yet the treasury, uh, the Federal Reserve is buying up treasuries in the marketplace, but the Federal Reserve is, or is not the Federal Reserve, the treasury is issuing more treasuries than usual. And there's not a, when it comes to auction, treasury auctions, there's not a lot of uh, excitement. A lot of people aren't buying, or corporate, not corporations, but uh, lending institutions like banks, designated banks, aren't buying as much aggressively like they used to. So, bottom line is the bond market, number one, is the largest market in the world. Okay? It is larger than the stock market. And it dictates a lot of things that go on in our world. And it is the place where you watch and look for behavior of what we'll be doing in the future when it comes to the stock market or currency market or uh, derivatives market, all that. It is a best place to look. And if we continue to see rising yields and we don't see growth, corporate or, or consumer growth also increasing, 
and we instead we see rising yields and uh, declining growth, we could be in a pickle. And this is where you best be on your risk management game. This is where you start to look ahead and see where is this money going? Where is the money flow going? And are we gonna have another run on US dollars? Meaning like we did back in March of 2020, where we went back and we said big con countries, corporations all went to the Fed window and said, I wanna exchange my treasuries for US dollars because I need liquidity. And if that happens, and the bond market starts to fall and the stock market starts to fall, then we've got a bit of a situation. Say that similar, that's, that event happened back in March of 2020, where you had both the stock market and the treasury market fall all together. Simultaneously, they both went down, which is a big problem. Well, we are bigger now debt wise or financially at risk bigger than we were a year ago. So we need to keep our eyes on that. And that's where my big trade idea is starting to develop and mature is that this could be the trade, uh, a big trade uh, in the future. As that develops, I'll share that with you. Hopefully this has been really helpful. Please hit the subscribe button and notifications and share it with a friend. The bond market is a place where you need to be paying attention to. So please do learn more about it. I'm doing my best to give you more content on bonds because I do believe this can be the leading indicator for you to best protect your money when markets go south, but also go north.